I'm a Southern Californian. It is no surprise that Southern California, accused of killing fish and stealing water from the North, might at times recognize that California is, if you will, ground zero for this problem. McLeod sits at the base of 14,000-foot Mount Shasta, a dormant volcano that dominates the landscape in far northern California and draws visitors from around the world. Mount Shasta's glacier and snowmelt feed the McLeod River, a hydrogeologically unique, crystal clear, ice cold stream well known as a world class trout fishery. It's a major trib tributary of the Sacramento River, the backbone of California's public water system. McLeod is a former lumber company town. The McLeod Community Services District provides our de facto city government. We're blessed with spring-fed municipal water supply that provides exceptional quality, untreated, cold spring water to every tap in town. In the fall of 2003, during a public meeting, the 100-year contract selling our water to Nestle was both announced and approved. We had assumed that this hearing was going to be the beginning of a public process. In fact, it was the culmination of backroom negotiations between Nestle and a few local politicians and public servants. Please consider investigating the practices and impacts of Nestle and other large water bottlers in McLeod and other small rural communities around our country. Please consider enacting legislation or policies that protect the significant investment that taxpayers and ratepayers have made in our public water supply infrastructure from corporate exploitation. And finally, please consider investigating the negotiation process that led to the contract between the McLeod Community Services District and Nestle Waters of North America. MCWC began at the local level asking our elected township officials to place a moratorium on the Nestle product project to give us time to investigate and evaluate a proposal of this magnitude for the potential impact on neighboring wells, lakes, streams, wetlands, wildlife, and the community's quality of life. Elected officials did not hear or listen to our voices. This eventually led MCWC to three petition drives on rezoning ordinance and to three courts the Macosta County Circuit Court, the Michigan Court of Appeals, and the Michigan Supreme Court. The findings of harm from Nestle's pumping remain intact and unaffected in all three courts. MCWC believed then, and it now has been proven, that irreparable harm would occur to the waterways due to pumping by Nestle at the Sanctuary Spring site. Nestle's pumping has caused harm to the dead stream by reducing the flow and level, narrowing the stream, exposing mud flats, and restricting the enjoyment of many of the members of MCWC and the public for fishing, boating, and kayaking on the stream. The findings of fact are in the court records that Nestle's pumping has created and will continue into the future to create adverse impacts to riparian uses and rights. The issue has pitted neighbor against neighbor, friendships have been severed, and Nestle has violated our lives either directly or indirectly with telephone polling, private investigators, the FBI coming to, home, to our homes, and a potential strategic, strategic lawsuit against public participation, a slap suit against my son. MCWC has spent nearly a million dollars on the lawsuit against Nestle. We continue to hold fundraisers such as bake sales and garage sales to continue to pay our legal and environmental bills. Barrington and Nottingham are located in the southeast portion of New Hampshire, equal distance from Concord and Portsmouth. All of their households rely on private wells for all their potable water. There is no town water system. These communities like Dover are old, uh, both were settled with around 1719 to 1722. They have a rural nature. They try to work hard to protect their citizens. A total of about 11,000 people live in the two communities. What happened in this instance was a failure by state government and federal agencies to protect the groundwater. This company 
uh, is, a, as I said, a privately held company whose business plan said they're going to bottle this water and ship it overseas. In other Does words, the company show an interest, Mr. McCann, in uh, being responsive to the community's concerns? No. Unfortunately, the company took the attitude from day one that it was their land, they could do what they want. They, they Beginning back in 2000, they actually went in and disturbed some of the wetlands without a permit. This is the way it started, and this is what had the people concerned, and their attitude throughout the whole process has been, you people shouldn't be out here bothering us. You shouldn't be complaining. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before the subcommittee today. My name is Heidi Paul. I'm Vice President of Corporate Affairs of Nestle Waters North America. Nestle Waters bottles and sells 15 regional brands of bottled water, including Deer Park and Poland Spring. We employ 9,000 employees in North America, and we have plants in 21 communities in the U.S. and two in Canada. We have been invited today to testify about the environmental effects of bottled water on groundwater and our operations in communities. Bottled water represents 0.02% of groundwater used. As a company, our use is sensitive to the environment and very efficient. We bottle a very healthy beverage. Not including bottled water, there are close to 75,000 different types and sizes of containerized beverages for sale in America. Most have calories, coloring, chemicals, alcohol, or caffeine. And when it comes to collecting the, and bottling spring water, Nestle Waters has an inherent interest in being a steward of a healthy environment at our spring sites. Our spring sources and the facilities that use them represent our most valuable investment. And using springs in a responsible manner today is the only way to ensure our continued success. To uh, Ms. Paul, in your testimony, you represent yourself as a trustworthy steward of the environment, uh, absent a court order or other legal requirement. If local people in a community bring to your attention significant adverse environmental impacts from your pumping operations, such as low stream flows, would your company be willing to reduce or to stop pumping? We base all of our pumping decisions on the science that says um, what's a sustainable use. So if the science was showing it was not a sustainable use, yes, we would cut back. Okay. Uh, well, if that is the case, and I take it as you say it, it's what you believe, uh, this subcommittee has been informed that your company continued to pump from its Stanwood plant in Michigan in the summer months this year, even when presented with photographic evidence that clearly show the flood, the flow levels in the stream-fed dead stream were dangerously low. We have a photo that was supplied to us by attorneys for MCWC that appears to show the dead stream living up to its name. Now, um, I'd like you to look at the picture there, which, uh, which represents the um, uh, low flow levels of the dead stream. We've also been informed that while Nestle's pumping may have been technically in compliance with a court order, this court order was only in place pending remand to a trial court after MCWC won its court case in order to determine, uh, determine safe pumping levels. This is a, what I know. A okay. picture taken of dead stream. And there are low flows flow and high low. flows of water bodies naturally occurring and just because there's a low flow. That, so you, you're maintaining that this was a naturally occurring low flow, is that your position? My position is that there's no harm to the environment, that there are naturally higher and lower flows, that this is affected by dams built by beavers, by many things, that um, the mud flats when they show are a feature that has resulted from a dredging, a historic dredging, and it's the natural sediment coming back to replace the dredged amount, uh, the dredged uh, soils. Done, or are there other studies? Are there studies that are independent of your study? I know of no independent studies, but I'm happy to share our studies. Uh, do you have any kind of knowledge of any scientific opinion that disagrees with your characterization? 
What I can say to that is there were, in the original lower court, some models created of what would be, could be the impact uh, of our use. That would be information that is different than what we've seen when we've actually used the water source. 